Hi, welcome to Tuesday Tips. We're excited to have everybody here. You know, what if you could be the hero by providing access to care that would allow your aging loved one to age in place or, you know, stay at home while building a care team that strengthens without straining your budget? And, you know, how many of us have $2,500 a week to provide 24 seven care or, or another way to put that be round the clock care? I mean, that's a ballpark of what it's going to take if you were to have to pay uh, for 24 seven caregivers in the home. Now that, that it could be either private pay or an agency or a combination of both, but that's about the ballpark. So hi everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Tuesday Tips today. My name is Pam Dunwald and I am one of your nurses from Your Nurse Advocates Consulting and I'm excited to share some information with you today. We have spent the month of June talking about dementia, Alzheimer's, the challenges of caregiving, and we're wrapping it up this month going into July focusing on how to build a care team without breaking the budget. Uh, there are there may be some caregivers that you may need to have in the home because they have uh, special training or, or they are considered experts at doing certain treatments or things. So I'm not saying that we can get by totally possibly without paid caregivers, but my goal is, is to bring us to, uh, to share some resources tonight to help you be able to put together a volunteer army, so to speak, that can share the, share the load, get you back some free time and help you be able to uh, grant the wish of your aging loved one to age in place. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about um, some resources today that, that can help you build that care team. So the goal then would be to develop a group of dedicated volunteers that, you know, care for your aging loved one because they want to, because maybe they have a relationship, maybe they're a neighbor, maybe they're a church family, maybe they're a good friend and, and they help them out when they need it. So a lot of people are willing to help, but they don't know how to ask or offer their help because they don't want to. Some people are proud and don't want to accept help. Some people are, oh, we're, we're fine, we're fine, we can do it. So they don't know how to ask. They don't know how to offer their help. But oftentimes, there are many people in your circle that would be willing to help. So again, we're going to share some resources on how to maybe start putting this all together. So uh, one of the things is, is to lever technology. Uh, technology can really reduce the need for um, physical meetings with your care team as you as you develop them. One of the one of the exercises I always do is, is just on a piece of paper, um, draw a circle. And in that in that middle, in that center of that circle, put yourself, any siblings you might have, any other immediate family members that have the, the capability of helping. Now, don't start sorting. Don't start judging. Don't say, well, Susie, you know, my sister, she lives halfway, you know, across the country. She can't help. No, no, no. We're not at this point in time. We are not counting anybody out because we, we just want to see who all the bodies would be that could help uh, put this care team together. Then next, draw another circle around that. Now, these are close friends, family friends, maybe close neighbors, people that you've known for a long time, church, you know, close church family members. Then we're going to draw that third circle. Now we're widening the loop. So these might be people that maybe aren't as close, but they could be acquaintances. They, maybe your church has a, like our church, we have a Hands of Faith uh, program where, you know, we do different things. There's a construction company at our church that that um, does things uh, pro bono for, for people that maybe, say, need a ramp built or or some minor handy work or that done. So a lot of um, churches and other organizations, you know, like the Eagles Club, the Moose Club, the VFW, you know, they have uh, groups within their organization that are willing to do some help. So, um, or willing to, to help out in some way. Otherwise too, last but not least, go through your phone, go through your aging loved one's phone, look at their contacts. And this is the start of how you can uh, pull together uh, some people to 
participate in that team. So on the job training, again, we're, we're not going to be getting into asking people to do it. And in this, in our webinar, we're going to go over this in, in more depth. So the two resources I wanted to talk briefly about uh, tonight would be uh, number one, our um, piecing together the care team on a budget. That is our free webinar that we are going to be uh, sharing on July, Monday, July 1st and Monday, July 8th of 2024. And we are going to be actually sharing. For those of you that are do it yourself, I got this, I can handle this. We are going to give you the framework and we're going to go over a lot of the, the ways that you can put this care team together and um, be able to have some ideas on how to go about that and how to choose like we're going to we're going to help you uh, select like what is the zone of genius once you start having a list of people how do you pull those people together you know you have a meeting uh, you have to find out when they're available when they're not available what they're comfortable with what they're not comfortable with so that's what we call their zone of genius and we begin to put this roster together of um and and technology is great i mean you could use a google sheet uh to to set up uh like a, a roster with people's name address phone number times that they're available you know what there's what they can do what they're willing to do some people might be willing to do meals some people might be willing to take uh your aging loved one to a doctor appointment so these are all the things that we're going to talk about during that free webinar that we're going to have we're going to give you the framework and then during that webinar, for those that find it overwhelming and want a little help, we're going to share the details on our boot camp that's coming up on July 13th, where we're going to be able to come alongside you and help you in real time put together that care team. So our webinar is the first resource that I, I really recommend. Uh, just to give you some kind of an idea on the uh, webinar, I'm just going to share a little bit of the framework uh, for you. Um, and so we're gonna talk about defining the roles, which I, I mentioned. We're gonna talk about how to recruit, how to identify team members, uh, the importance of clear communication and coordination. We're gonna give you some real life examples. And the example I'm gonna talk ne about next is a real life example where we use both of the resources that we're gonna talk about during this Tuesday Tips. Uh, and that is with Mr. and Mrs. D. So we're going to talk about uh, how we pulled that together 24-7 round-the-clock care. Uh, we're going to talk about strategies and decisions behind um, the success of care teams and, and what common mistakes and pitfalls to avoid. We're going to talk about um, more cost-effective ways to meet the, the care needs of your aging loved one and tips for maximizing community resources and as I mentioned before, we're going to introduce um, our, our boot camp. So that is the one resource that I wanted to talk to you tonight was about our free webinar that we're going to offer that twice. They will both be recorded. So if you register for the webinar and you can't make it, I know it's summertime and a lot of people are vacation and things going on. If you at least register for the webinar, you're insured to get the replay and all the things that, that we share during the live um, uh, webinar. All right, let's go into, before we talk about um, the story or the real life example, I want to talk about another resource. And that resource is called Share the Care. And what is that? What is that? Well, actually, it is a uh, nonprofit it's a 5013, 503C nonprofit organization started by a group out on the East Coast. And they are um, they put together this, this model that's called Share the Care. And what it is, is it's kind of a, a train the trainer uh, program. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to uh, put the link of that in um, to the uh comments here as well as I will for the webinar. So I'm going to put this uh, link in there for the share the, the share the care uh, website for you. And basically, like I said, it's a it's a train the trainer type of thing. There's a book that you can purchase. There is uh, they have forms and resources. 
a little bit different than what than what we do. So I mean, neither one is is they're both great resources, but I just want to offer you something more than than just our services. But uh, so this is the sharethecare.org. Uh, and again, this is where they uh, provide all the tools necessary to help you put together a care team that provides emotional, social, and practical support um, for you as the primary caregiver. Uh, the share the care model is, is not just necessarily for um, aging loved ones. It uh, could be for difficult pregnancies, preemie, preemies, multiple births, uh, parents caring for a seriously ill child, uh, grandparents uh, raising small children, uh, seriously or chronically ill or disabled people, older adults, which is, is the niche for your nurse advocate consulting. That's who we, that's our, uh, the people and the families that we help is for aging loved ones. Maybe uh, someone may need help uh, after rehabbing, uh, rehabilitation after a surgery, an accident, or coming home from the military, or end of life palliative care and hospice resources. So these are the type of um, different types of scenarios where you may need to, you know, put together a, a care team. So um, they've already put the systems and things in place for you to be able to uh, uh, put together your care team. They have trainings, they have educational, uh, they, they uh, reach out, have programs like for caregiver events, faith communities. We did participate in the train, the trainer. So we have all their, we utilize a lot of their resources uh, and women's organizations, clubs, retirement communities. These are some of the, the places that the Share the Care serves. And one of the things, um, how they got started is uh, it was, uh, mm -hmm. they have a video on there. It's 25 minutes kind of walking you through um, some of the founders of this. And it was back in 1984, they were only, they were young teens when their mother was diagnosed with a rare terminal cancer. And so through that experience that they have, that they wanted to be able to take what they've learned and, and, and take what they've been able to do and put it together in a model um, to be able to provide information, forms, and suggestions on how to maintain this caregiver group, especially if it has to be done over a long period of time. So again, that is the share the care um, model. And I'm going to go ahead and um, put in the link then for our um, for our uh, free webinar. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And again, there's two dates to choose from. We have uh, Monday, next Monday, July 1st. And then we also have um, the following Monday, uh, Monday, July 8th. And so those are two dates. With this link, you can pick whatever uh, date is uh, best for you. I'm gonna go ahead and just share that here, but it's in the comment section. So for you know whichever date might be good. And again, just a reminder, as we mentioned before, this is going to be recorded. So you will have access um, to all the information. So um, the, any questions? I know we have a few people watching live. If you have any questions about the webinar or share the care or what we can do, you know, to help you pull together, you know, again, going back to that $2,500 a week, you know, my, my example that I was going to share before we wrap up was with Mr. and Mrs. D. Now she had Alzheimer's. She came to me early on when she recognized that she was having some uh, trouble remembering uh, the names of people at church. So she actually stopped going because she was embarrassed. And so the husband had one wish and that was that we were to keep her at home and that she wouldn't go in a nursing home no matter what. And so we took that challenge on as, you know, your nurse advocates. And we, we put together, we used the share the care model. We put together a team of volunteers. Um, even the mailman was, was involved in, in part of the care. So you never know who is willing to help unless you ask. And so many people from, from church were able to help, neighbors were able to help, uh, family, distant family, you know, grandchildren were able to help. And we were able to put together a schedule 
based on the needs of Mr. Mr. and Mrs. D and based on what the skills were of the people. Some people would bring, they just had, some people had one night a week. They knew Tuesday night was their night to do a freezer meal or to prepare, you know, a, a meal or bake or cook or do something. So something just as little as that. And, and the thing is, is, is that when you build these care teams, we don't want to overwhelm everyone. If we ask too much of volunteers, they get burned out very quickly. So the key is, is to find little small things, even if they volunteer to do a ton of things, start out very small, one thing at a time. And, and if they say, hey, I've got an extra day this week, I can do something else. Well, then take advantage of that. But don't don't raise the bar and the expectations, you know, so high that, that everybody is spread too thin and then they're going to drop out because it's going to be too overwhelming for them. Maybe someone, um, you know, not everybody's going to be willing to take someone to the bathroom. I mean, that that takes a, a little bit more of a, a special uh, person that has skills or comfort level for doing something like that, but you may have a gentleman maybe willing to take them to the doctor appointment. Um, you may have, um, you know, someone that will make phone calls, maybe arrange transportation. Maybe some one of your volunteers would be one that would keep the schedule and kind of be the team leader as one of the things that's suggested in the Share Their Care program is that you find someone who's highly organized, maybe more of an introvert, um, isn't real comfortable, you know, getting out and doing things or, you know, but maybe they're, they're comfortable behind their computer doing the schedules and making sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and the holes are filled in the schedule. So everybody has a strength. Everybody has a gift. Our job is just to make sure that we match the right gift with what our aging loved one needs. And that's another thing in the webinar that we're going to go through is how do you know what your aging loved one needs? What, what, how, how do you determine uh, what type of skills? So we have a, a caregiver uh, self assessment checklist to help you determine what the needs are. We also have a, like a, um, a caregiver task list, kind of a checklist to help give you some ideas of what types of things that people can help you with. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this Tuesday tips this evening with those two resources that we've shared um, with you today. And we look forward to if this is of interest to you and you're looking to find some way to free up some time, take some burden off your shoulders and and not have to, you know, may, maybe your loved one or you can't afford you know, to have all the hours filled by private caregivers or agency caregivers, there's no shame in that. And like I said, there's a, there's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of good people that are willing to help. We just have to ask and we have to match them with the things that they are, are best at. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and see you next Tuesday for another Tuesday Tips. Take care and we'll see you soon.